And I always talk about, and I'm sure a lot of people can agree with this, but you attract your reality with your mentality, your state of being. See, there's people who have heard the, you have to go within so many times that <laughs> they take it as a joke now. It's like desensitized. But that was the point. You know what I'm saying? And if you feel like, oh, you know, I have to go within. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Then, yeah, you're lost in the sauce because it really is all starting from you anyway. You know what I'm saying? And it's a, about as about as easy as it can get once you start to just redirect everything from you. Take accountability and responsibility for everything in your game from you. You're putting all the power back to you because if energy is flowing where attention goes and you're putting your attention outside of you, but not directing it to you, then you're you're not energizing your 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 very idea of what you think you are. You know what I'm saying? Now, ego death. We talk about ego death, but it, ego de is that is the ego even really alive? The ego is just an illusion, right? We talk about you see when we look at reality through these eyes, we're looking at it from the illusion eyes because you, with everything that you see outside of you being an illusion, this vessel is part of the illusion. So if you're looking at it with the illusion. Then you're looking at the illusion with the illusion. But there's a way you seem like how cameras, they focus and the lens just kind of retracts and protracts in and out. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, you know, you just kind of like, you seen how 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 in the movie uh, Get Out, how how the vision just started, you know, he started to just sink in and, and now he's in a sunken place. It's kind of like you just, you're looking at it now, right? From a, a first person view. But you're looking through the lenses, not from the lenses. You know what I'm saying? It's it's hard to explain. It's kind of like taking the eyeball and turning it around and looking at yourself. That's kind of impossible to do, right? So you have to you have to do it in a way where you're using your imagination to some extent. But you you kind of just like narrow your vision back. See, everything out here is just waves. It only becomes materialized based on our observation. So everything is just waves. What's in your head, we know we have a brain, right? But I'm not seeing my brain, so it's just a it's just a wave, right? Which is why we have brain waves, okay? And we emit a frequency based on our brain wave states. What's inside of me is nothing but waves. Okay? I'm not observing it. The only thing I can observe is my physical body when I look at it. But what's inside of me is infinite potential. Just waves. Right? Waves. Anything behind me. If I'm not observing it. Is just waves. People talk about flat earth round earth. I'm going to drink to that. See the only person I ever heard say. That the earth is not flat or round. But it's a wave. Is flight boss. And I kind of fuck with that. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you're not looking at it, it's just a wave. Everything is just waves. Unless you're observing it. If you get into quantum mechanics, quantum science, everything is just waves. So if I break down your body to the most minute level, you're nothing but atoms consisting of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And everything in between is just empty space, which is potential energy. Right? So everything is just Particles of vibration, okay? And the, the the more dense is the lower the vibration of whatever I'm observing in my reality, okay? So, but then again, I'm here by myself. As I made the example, if the sun was to go out, the sun is the generator, but the sun is me. So if the sun happens to just go out, then this body goes out too because it's generating these particles for me to be able to observe it into exact see I'm I'm creating my reality with the senses. So if I'm touching it, I'm activating whatever I'm touching with my physical senses. I am looking at whatever I'm looking at is actually activated with my sight because it, it, it's literally something I'm receiving and I am able to activate everything outside. If I'm smelling something, if I'm tasting something, just go to show that if you're observing it, and it's very interesting when you really, really sit down and just take your time with this one. Because you see, you have all the time in the world because you are time. So you have all the time in the world to just sit there and literally 
observe even when you're drinking a cup of water, which I, I actually got a video from uh, Marina Abramovich where she was talking about just drinking a cup. Of, see, people won't listen to her because she, they say she's demonic and whatnot and she eats babies, whatever the fuck they say about her. I don't give a fuck. See, I, this is the thing. I leave the morality part out and I just listen to the information. But I'm observing it at the same time, okay? Because at the end of the day, whatever you're observing, it's you're receiving it like if you were a black hole. You know what I'm saying? So you're first observing it. And, you, you know, the, the, the most important sense is basically sight. That's why people say seeing is believing, okay? But then again, in the middle, you got a little black hole there. So it's basically like absorbing things like a black hole, okay? But now you're making this is this is the information that you're receiving and it's forming your nation okay but you're you need to make sure that you're not associating yourself with what you're observing i mean what you're looking at you're observing so you're not of it okay everything that you're observing you're not of it you're just observing it but if you're just observing it you're not observing it with these eyes you're observing it with that's why they say the eyes are windows to the soul so what's behind your eyes, you're observing it with that. Again, focus the lens and get yourself real, real deep into the, the into, into the middle part. This is just waves in there. People talk about the third eye. Third eye is just waves. Everything's waves. You're not observing your third eye. You could feel it. You know what I'm saying? You could feel it. When you start to put your attention there, you start to feel that this starts to feel a, a tingling sensation. It'll even start to vibrate when you're meditating. You know what I'm saying? Everything when you're putting attention to it, but you're not physically looking at it, it's within you. Like when you have a feeling, you're not looking at your feeling, right? But you're feeling it because you're not looking at it. But then when you look at things outside of you, it gives you a feeling as well. But then when you close your eyes and you just put attention to a certain area in your body, you'll start to feel a feeling. All right. But it's not the same feeling as if you were looking at something outside of you that is giving you either happiness or, or a disturbing feeling, okay? When you're just looking at something, you're just observing, you're neutral toward it. You know what I'm saying? You're just looking at it. People say appreciation. Appreciation is the best vibration to be in because... It opens the doors for more of that energy that serves you to come into your space. But then again, what if you had no sight? What if you were given a mansion, but you were blind? How would you appreciate that mansion? I would be like, yo, well, if I'm walking inside this mansion and I got all this space, I could just go outside into the woods and I got way more space there than I do in the mansion. The only reason that you value this mansion so much is because of your eyesight. Okay. But then when you close your eyes, you have all the space in the world. You're in basically nothingness, yet it's everything at the same time because it's nothing. If you're, some, if you're looking at something, it's limited to that something. But it's not anything. Because that's why you have consciousness, to make sure that you can make that nothingness into, into whatever it is that you want it to be. But you got to look at your reality the same way. You're really looking at nothing. It really is nothing out here anyway. The people... See, here's the thing. This is why I wanted to make this video. If we're creating our reality with our mental state, right? And everything outside of you is you. And you attract the very things that your mental state is on. Whether it's favorable or unfavorable. Okay? Then... I am also a big advocate as to dream work makes the dream, uh, 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 teamwork makes the dream work, which I've also heard from Flight Balls. I got, I'm giving him credit because I've watched a few of his videos. I don't agree with everything he says, but some of the things he said, I'm like, God damn you, this shit is, is pretty fire because, but then it, it's, it's like, I'll, based on what I know, I can correlate and tie in certain things that he says to what I know. Now, the important thing about listening to certain people is that when you're not in that, like if you don't understand what they're saying, it's because you haven't experienced yet, but you're not in that frequency or vibration. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the directions that he may go in goes into the direction of putting too much attention to what's happening outside, which 
in actuality to me, really doesn't matter unless it matters to me, unless I make it matter. You know what I'm saying? But whatever direction things are going in, like people ask me, what direction do you see the world go? It goes in whatever direction I actually want it to go in. Now, there's energies outside, like planets that influence and co-govern energies here that we're experiencing. But these things are all within you anyway. Again, everything is just an illusion outside of you. But then there's also a fine line between being delusional and saying, oh, I, I, I'm not taking responsibility for anything because everything's an illusion. No. All right. It's kind of like saying like I have kids. So now because they're an illusion, I'm not going to take responsibility for them. No, you created them. You take responsibility for them. You know what I'm saying? They're your creations, just like any thought forms. You're responsible for whatever thought forms you have <coughs> here in this reality because they're free. All right. Roaming for somebody to just catch and do something with it. So if you're having negative thoughts, all right. Anybody can just catch these negative thoughts. But then again, think about this. These people outside of you are a version or an extension of you. So if you think these people are a version or extension of you, if you can agree with that, wouldn't you want it to be in your best interest to keep your mind state and thoughts under control or at least observed by you and either transmute or transform these thoughts? Because, see, based on how we're ingesting things okay we may have our mindset infiltrated the same way when you eat certain foods there's certain things in those foods that allow aliens to come into your gut but the gut is literally the most important brain not the one on the top all right if your solar plexus is in your gut and that's the generator the same way the sun is the generator and it's showing you the reality here. What do you think? Whatever you're putting in your stomach is showing you your reality outside of you too. Because that's your soul. That's your sun. That's your soul. That's your solar plexus. That's why you eat soul food. You eat soul food and you process nourishing information so that you can actually be a service to other people. People say, well, what? why do I need to be? A See, this is the thing. This is why. Let me cheers to that. first. But here's the thing that's important to realize. And I'm talking from experience, okay? If I am with somebody or I'm in a circle of people, I'm going to wish or visualize them in an abundant, prosperous state. And the reason I'm going to do that is because those people are a version or an extension of me. They're somewhere in my body. And if they prosper, then I am activating... A certain piece in my body. Prosperity. And I am also consenting. Consciously. To that energy of prosperity. If I come out and I'm jealous of somebody. Because they're prospering. Then what I'm doing is. I'm putting out an energy. To the universe. Whatever that may be, mean to you. Saying that. I do not consent to prosperity. I am jealous. These people don't deserve to prosper. But those people are a version of me. This thing may sound cliche, but if you look at the works of, and these things make very, very perfect sense, the game of life and how to play it, you can look at the works of Neville Goddard, you can look at the works of, uh, uh, I forgot the other dude, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I'll, I'll be talking about it as I go along, but you see, through financial uh, guru videos, you'll start to notice that these things don't just correlate to just the physical, but you can look at things from a spiritual aspect as well. You know what I'm saying? But the people only focus on that information to just serve them on a monetary basis. You know what I'm saying? But there's enough wealth to go around for everybody. When your mind is in competition, then you're setting yourself up and putting yourself in a position to say that there is not enough for everybody. So you have to work harder. But when you know that there is enough for everybody, you do not have to be in competition. In fact, you don't even have to work too hard. Abundance just comes to you because you know there's enough for everybody. Be the change you want to see is what that is all about. So if you know there's enough for everybody, but if you're, you see, this is the thing about even people say, I don't want to waste my energy. I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, get my energy drained. See, here's the thing. I, I embody the Wolverine energy for that reason. Because I believe in the art of recovery. Okay? See, I have an instant healing factor. And I've already proven it physically when I broke my wrist. Okay? 
But if you have an incredible healing factor and you can use these energies to your advantage, then you don't have to worry about where energy is going. You can recover it just as quick. You know what I'm saying? In fact, you stay younger that way. You stay looking younger that way. You stay feeling good that way. Even people who know their power in that sense, negative energy can't even affect them. See, there's people who would say, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, that I'm attracting these people that, you know, want to give me, you know, vomit on me. And what. It's because of you not setting your boundaries first within you. So you attract these very people into your life. But then when you see these things physically happening, you have to put an end to it right then and there. And then from there, as an observer, you say, I'm not judging this, but I am also seeing this as a reflection. And what I'm going to do is fix that within me so that now nobody really sees me as that person that they're going to come and vomit on me or give me negative drama or energy. Now, here's the thing, though. When you set those boundaries, okay, these people who originally would have thought about vomiting on you, they wouldn't even think about vomiting on you anymore. They would be like, oh, no, I'm not fucking with that person. It's just it's just an energy that would just protrude out of you that you wouldn't even, you would be unfuck withable. You get what I'm saying? Nobody would think to say, hey, man, you know, uh, this day and, and, you know, just vomit on you or whatever. No, they wouldn't even think about it. Like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell that person. No, I'm not going to fuck with that person. No, no, no. It's just like an energy that you're going to have an aura where people won't even think about trying to come and vomit on you. They would, they'll be intimidated to do that. The same way I spoke about in my previous video when you're in a face-off. If your energy is high, but it's not just being, it's just you being home. Being home, being centered, grounded, centered. Centered means you're not looking at reality with these eyes. You're in your center and you're observing it from a different lens. You're observing it from a different layer. Again, I, I, the only way I can, I can give you this example is you taking your eyeball and looking at yourself. Because people are looking for themselves outside. Like you can see this as a blueprint. These people outside would just be a blueprint. But you can't physically take your eyeball out. So what you could do is observe these things outside of you with no judgment. Like Planet Fitness, Planet Fitness, you know what I'm saying? And you just basically, what you do is you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing these things. These, are, these things are gems and jewels for me. And then what I'll do is I'll, of course, you take physical action in whatever means you have to. And then figure out why it is that you just happen to be attracting that into your life. And you know, at one point I would have thought this is crazy talk, but when I sat down and took my time, cause I'm time, I have all the time in the world. And I just literally sat down with myself and said, wow, why am I attracting this in my life? You know what I'm saying? It literally just surfaces up and it starts to show you through hunches, inspirations, through certain symbols that you are now aware of because you put your intent to knowing something. Like if I, if I'm looking, if I'm, if I'm all of a sudden searching for a car and I became fanatic about this car, all of a sudden now I'm going to start to see this car everywhere, right? So it's the same thing. If I set my intention, if I set my intention to, you know, ask myself certain questions about my reality, ask and you shall receive. Okay. So this is why it's important to, this is what the consciousness, this is the beauty of consciousness. The level of consciousness too though. See, animals don't have that level of consciousness. We do. So we can change our life by changing our mind. And then you want to lose your mind when you need to. But you need to use your mind when you have to. Because it will be, it will be used for you. Because people say, oh, you know, ego death. Or, you know, lose your mind. No, you lose your mind when you have. You lose your mind. Yes. Yes. When you lose your mind, <laughs> then you find yourself a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not, you see, that's why they say the mind is all, the universe is mental. So you use that most powerful tool. But it's not, it's how you use it. That's the important thing. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover on this video. I'll make another video on, on you know, another topic I wanted to cover, but... Uh, I would appreciate it if you liked and shared or subscribed. And if you are subscribed, make sure you hit that little uh, bell. Um, just so you get notified and uh, of my latest content if you appreciate my content. And, um, you know, we'll talk soon.